Now, thank you. Thank you very much. Um, you know, it's been, uh, this has been an amazing, amazing weekend so far. And, you know, the last time I spoke to an Alberta Party AGM, it was, it was about a year and a half ago. Since that time, we've gone through three tenures. <laughs> and, and I'm the longest standing leader of a major <laughs> several thanks and, and I'm gonna go a little off script which is always a bit dangerous but there's been some uh, some pretty remarkable conversations that have gone on first I'm gonna start by just thanking the people who organized this weekend and made it happen um, I really really wanted to take a huge round of applause uh, for Phil Hyde and Megan Wade the amount of work that they put on for all the work on uh, keeping us organized and on task. <laughs> and who can forget Mr. Dick Berditsky on keyboards? Yeah. <laughs> I also want to say it's been, uh, it's been just a, a, a remarkable experience uh, working with this board. I've been on a lot of boards in my time, and no board is perfect. Um, this board isn't perfect. The next board also won't be perfect, but boy, this is by far and away the best board I have ever been a part of. <laughs> it is a remarkable group of people. I'd like everyone who was a board member in this past board to please stand up and be recognized for all the amazing work that you've done in keeping this party going. <laughs> Person. I want to say thank you again to Will Munsey. Okay. <laughs> well, Will, thank you. Thank you for everything you've done. You've, uh, you, you, you've, you're you the heart and soul of this party. It's remarkable, mm -hmm. everything you've done. So thank you, thank you. Um, I want to say thanks to Stephen Carter. Uh, <laughs> Mostly for teaching my girls words they have not heard at home. <laughs> Just occasionally from my wife. <laughs> so everyone has to learn uh, something at every time. But I also, um, and, and before I get, get further in, into the speech, I do want to recognize that, uh, that we are here in Red Deer this weekend. Red Deer is on the traditional territory that borders Treaty 6 and Treaty 7. Uh, and I want to acknowledge the great work of, of the bands and band leaders both here, Treaty 6, 7, and all around the province. Yeah. 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 We've had some amazing conversations. I had a great discussion with someone last night who said, you know, Greg, this is my first Alberta Party convention. These are my people. <laughs> These are my people. This is great. Just the intellectual exchange, the discussion, the conversation, and the fact that not everybody agrees with everything uh, that everyone else says. That is the essence of democracy. And that's who the Alberta Party is. That's who we are. And what this tells me, looking at, out at all of the faces in this room, many of whom I've seen before and many of whom I haven't, is that the Alberta Party is on the move. Yes. We're moving forward. More unlike any other party in Alberta, because we represent the values and the views and the beliefs and the hopes and dreams and aspirations of Albertans. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I joined the Alberta Party because I'm proud to be an Albertan. Like all of us in this room, I'm incredibly proud to be an Albertan. It's an amazing place to call home. It's a place of opportunity, a place where hard work is rewarded, rich with natural resources and exceptional beauty. But for the last few months, we've heard nothing but doom and gloom from Jim Prentice about how terrible things are, about the radical steps and massive cuts required to fix Alberta's government finances. But most of all, we've heard that we should all be afraid. So I'll tell you something. I'm not afraid. Are you afraid? No. No. No, Albertans are not afraid, Albertans are optimistic, and I am incredibly optimistic about the future of our province. You know, in the 110 years since Alberta joined Confederation, we faced immense challenges, but each and every time we have met those challenges head on. And the result is a province we can be proud to call home, made up of people we are proud to call our neighbours. 
Whether it's been drought, slumping oil prices, floods, wildfires, Albertans have met each and every challenge with optimism and determination. And we always come out the other side stronger. We're a province that doesn't know the meaning of the word quit. That Alberta spirit of determination and optimism is a core part of the Alberta party. Now, doubters, well, they've told us what we're trying to do can't be done. They've said it is an impossible task to create a new party in a province with a 43-year political dynasty. Well, I don't believe them. Do you believe them? No. no. What we're trying to do here impossible? No. Absolutely not. Because Albertans have always made the impossible possible. People more than a century ago were told it was impossible to establish farms and homesteads or even to survive an Alberta winter. Oil sands pioneers were told it was impossible to overcome the technical challenges and produce oil sands economically. Medical researchers at the University of Alberta were told nothing could be done to improve the lives of people with type 1 diabetes. Doctors at the University of Calgary were told <coughs> every stroke was a death sentence. But they didn't give up. They didn't take no for an answer. And our province, our world, is better for it. And these Albertans, and so many more like them, overcame great odds because they chose to lead. Like each and every one of us do in our communities, we choose to lead. And now we hear the very real challenges of climate change or market access or low oil prices and the impact these will have on Alberta. Now, these are not challenges or problems to be afraid of. These are once-in-a-lifetime opportunities that only Albertans can solve and only if we embrace that opportunity. And we will solve them only if we have a vision and the bravery and the skills needed to achieve that vision. So who here thinks there's going to be an election called soon? <laughs> <laughs> who here thinks there should be an election called soon? No. Well, whether we like it or not, we are about to have an expensive and unnecessary election this spring. And the election is about one thing and one thing only, and that is ensuring Jim Prentice has an overwhelming majority so he can do whatever he wants. But just like he did when he overturned a decision of the supposedly independent committee of the legislature and cut funding not only to the child and youth advocate, but to Alberta's Auditor General. And just like when he initially cancelled the Calgary Cancer Centre and then unilaterally decided it was better suited to be 45 minutes away from the university, the children's hospital, and the research hub that drives life-saving discoveries. Or when he ensured the defeat of Bill 202 in favor of Bill 10, one of the most divisive and hurtful pieces of legislation in mm -hmm. recent memory. Yeah. <laughs> Jim Prentice is calling this election now, after gutting the official opposition, when two parties have only interim leaders a full year before his own party's fixed election date says he should, simply to steal this election by denying Albertans a choice. But I'm here to tell you, here and now, we are not going to let that happen. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we are ready to challenge this government. We have nominated strong, smart, impressive candidates across the province. And we will be announcing more high-quality candidates, many of you in this room today, in the coming days and weeks. We have an experienced, passionate campaign team in place, and we are ready to fight this election. But we will not succeed by focusing only on the abuses of power and entitlement of the PC party. I think those are pretty well known. This election will be about the Alberta party's vision for the future. A vision rooted not only in optimism, but in deep appreciation for the possibilities of this province. Our plan will balance the books, diversify the economy, protect our environment, and save for the future. Our plan will make sure we have the roads, schools, universities, health care, seniors facilities, and infrastructure we need to make Alberta truly great. Our plan will ensure people, all people, regardless of cultural background, sexual orientation, gender identification, or income level, are treated with dignity and respect. Mm -hmm. everything we do is rooted in the six core values of the Alberta Party. Prosperity, fiscal and social responsibility, 
sustainability, democracy, and quality of life. These are the Alberta Party values because they are the quintessential Albertan values. So how are we going to live up to these principles and values? Well, like people who make this community, and these, our community and our province great, the Alberta Party chooses to lead, which I'm very proud to announce is the theme for our 2015 election campaign. In this election, we choose to lead the fundamental transformation away from using unpredictable resource revenues to fund core programs in health, education, human services, and everything we value. Unlike the PCs who cross their fingers and hope the price of oil goes up so they can afford kindergarten spaces, the Alberta Party will make the hard decisions needed to ensure we use stable, <coughs> predictable revenues to fund all core operations and all core programs. In the coming days and weeks, we will roll out our economic recovery plan. This plan finds the right balance between stable revenues, ensures every taxpayer dollar is spent efficiently, and responsible borrowing. Now, Albertans are fortunate. We have been given the gift of vast natural resources. But our current government has relied for too long on the bounty from these resources to fund core programs. And put simply, they have cut taxes too far. Now, you may not expect to hear that from an Alberta political leader. But it's time to be honest about the situation we find ourselves in after 43 years of PC mismanagement. We must choose to lead, and the Alberta party chooses to be bold. Now, it's well known that Alberta has the lowest tax rates in Canada. But did you know that Alberta pays $11 billion less in taxes than the next lowest taxed province in Canada? <laughs> now, that's not lower than the national average. That's not lower than the top tax province in Canada. Alberta pays $11.6 billion less than number nine in the list of 10 provinces in Canada. Now that gap is unsustainable and has led to massive budget deficits when energy royalties drop, which we, living in a cyclical economy, we know they always will. But even in the good times, Alberta struggles to keep up. And there certainly is a lot of criticism to go around for the poor management of our public services and there certainly are budget efficiencies to be found. But none of the blame, absolutely none of the blame, should go to our dedicated public servants, teachers, nurses, doctors, government employees who provide the critical services that we all rely upon every day. <laughs> Each and every person working on the front lines of Alberta's public services has made a fair deal with the government. None more so than teachers, who agree to a three-year wage freeze, a zero percent increase three years in a row. A deal is a deal, and the Alberta Party will fight against any wage rollback for teachers, nurses, public servants of any and all kinds all across the province. <laughs> government would take a balanced approach to moving Alberta to a more stable economic footing. Both businesses and Albertans will contribute to the solution. An Alberta party government would move corporate taxes from being the very lowest in Canada to tied for lowest in Canada. We would eliminate the unfair flat tax that hurts middle and low income earners and implement a fair progressive income tax. <laughs> modest permanent increases to our, our what is currently the lowest gasoline tax in Canada. We would not implement a health care premium or a sales tax because those hurt those least able to pay it the very most. <laughs> These changes would generate between three and four billion dollars in recurring revenues year in, year out. This would be used to build the schools we need, the long-term care we need, the post-secondary spaces we need, and most importantly, it would ensure stable, predictable funding to all core services. An additional $325 million in one-time revenue will come from the aggressive collection of corporate taxes that have been uncollected, as identified by the Auditor General. And we would find $250 million in annual savings through cost efficiencies found through management improvements in the administration of our public services. This, I believe, will make up for most or all of the budget shortfall this year. Now, those of you 
who are taking notes might say, but that doesn't add up to $7 billion. How are you going to make up the $7 billion deficit? Well, you know what? I don't think there is a $7 billion deficit. <laughs> has been setting us up for massive cuts to the public service by not telling the truth. We believe in responsible borrowing to invest in critical infrastructure projects and catch up on the massive maintenance backlog that's been left behind by years of PC underinvestment. And when energy royalties recover, future surpluses would be reinvested into the Heritage Fund to ensure both current and future generations benefit from our resource wealth, unlike the PCs who have not contributed to the Heritage Fund since 1987. That's a long time. To ensure we're never in this position again, the Alberta Party chooses to lead in diversifying our economy. That will safeguard our economic well-being against an uncertain future. Now, unlike the PCs, who have put our province in a position to be all in on oil and gas. Now, I am fiercely proud of our energy industry, and I believe we should continue the responsible development of our natural resources. But Alberta has a huge untapped potential as the world transitions to a knowledge-based economy. I believe we should support entrepreneurs because I fundamentally believe in market-driven economic diversification. An Alberta Party government would implement a three-year tax holiday for new small businesses, and we would invest a minimum of $100 million in seed capital in an Alberta Enterprise Fund, an arm's-length agency that would invest in companies whose focus goes beyond oil and gas. This will allow Alberta to build from our strengths in energy and encourage innovation in green technologies and renewable energy. Apply our natural strength in agriculture to expand our agri-food industry and ensure we give biotech and emerging information technology companies the support they need to thrive. In healthcare, the Alberta Party chooses to lead the transformation of our healthcare system from an acute sickness care system to a true healthcare system by ensuring all Albertans have easy access to preventative primary healthcare in their communities. continuing care and long-term care beds that we need, but that is only part of the solution. Most want to age in their own homes closer to family for as long as possible. The Alberta Party will ensure quality home care is available to all Albertans. Yeah. <laughs> By losing your spot on the page, I <laughs> thought I had that line memorized, but I did it. It's an important one, though, so let me make sure I get it right. So we choose to lead in mental health by creating a true <coughs> provincial mental health strategy. And unlike so many strategies we've seen from this government, we will give both the resources and the time it needs to succeed. Mm -hmm. And unlike the PCs who have allowed for the creeping privatization of health care in Alberta, the Alberta Party will fiercely defend public health care in Alberta. <laughs> In education, the Alberta Party chooses to lead that by creating a system that will equip the next generation with the critical thinking skills they need to ensure success in a rapidly changing world. Unlike our current education minister who, when he does actually choose to say something, <laughs> talks about a regressive back to the basics approach that was outdated decades ago. The Alberta Party is committed to the full implementation of inspiring education and we will reduce the amount of taxpayer funding to private schools in favor of more support for public education. Yes. We will make the investments necessary to eliminate school fees, which are currently the highest in Canada. And we will, without question, support all students, regardless of gender or sexual identity, and ensure they are able to form GSAs on school property without having to ask the Minister of Education <laughs> and without having to ask <laughs> Post-secondary education. It has already endured more than its fair share of cuts. 
The Alberta Party will invest in post-secondary education and to ensure those who qualify have the opportunity to go to school without incurring crippling debt loads. We will move Alberta's post-secondary participation rate up from being the very lowest in Canada. We will work with our universities, not against them, to ensure stable, long-term funding so they can do the work of educating the next generation and not spending their time planning fundraisers so they can keep their departments open. <laughs> Climate change, water use, land use, these should not be seen as a barrier to be overcome by our energy industry and others. But this is the single greatest opportunity we've seen in a generation. A government that chooses to lead would recognize that Alberta is in a unique position. If we choose to apply our expertise in engineering to reducing carbon emissions from large industrial processes, we will not only succeed at creating technologies and companies that will help diversify our economy, but the world will want to do business with Alberta. The Alberta Party would choose to lead by accelerating the phase out of coal fired power and by implementing a renewable energy strategy that would ensure much more of Alberta's electricity is generated from renewable sources. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Genuine, true leadership will create the conditions necessary that will allow our existing energy industry to continue to thrive. And the Alberta Party chooses to lead in poverty reduction by implementing a province-wide plan to lift every single one of the hundred, more than 100,000 children who currently live in poverty and low-income households out of poverty. We, we choose to lead in creating new and better relationships with First Nations, acknowledgement by acknowledging past injustices and committing to healing over the long term. We believe genuine engagement goes beyond just economic opportunities. Mm -hmm. We choose to lead in creating a new relationship with municipalities that makes them true partners and recognizes their role in delivering many of the services, building the infrastructure that make our communities good places to live and a great place to make a life. <laughs> we choose to lead by investing in Alberta's creative industries because we recognize the social and economic value that arts and culture brings to our province. The arts can play a major role in diversifying our economy and improving our already great quality of life. Yes. So, if you hear anyone say the Alberta Party doesn't have any policy, <laughs> I want you to tell them what I just told you. <laughs> this is our platform for the 2015 election and I could not be more proud to share it with you and to share it with Albertans. But this election will not be only about great policy. It is about the very foundations of our democracy. We have a premier who plays fast and loose with the rules to ensure he gets what he wants and treats our sacred democratic institutions as an inconvenience to be ignored. Mm -hmm. Alberta needs a government committed to democracy led by a party committed to democracy. Mm -hmm. And perhaps my favorite of all Alberta Party policies is our MLA guideline, which says the number one role of an MLA is to represent the people who elected them in the Legislative Assembly of Alberta. The foundational principle of the Alberta Party is to restore Alberta's democracy. And in this election, we choose to lead and we will do exactly that. So, as you can see, in this campaign, and as always, the Alberta Party will focus on the issues that matter to Albertans. We have a vision for the future of our province, an optimistic vision that will ensure Alberta is economically prosperous and socially strong for generations to come. And it's because of this vision that every day more and more people are joining the Alberta Party, including many of you. The Alberta Party is open to anyone who shares our values and our vision for Alberta. And a lot like Alberta itself, many of us come from different places. 
In the case of the Alberta Party, most of our members were once a member of another political party. As mm -hmm. most of you probably know, I used to work for Liberal leader Lawrence Decor. Our executive director was once with Wild Rose. And many of you have been members of the PCs, the NDs, the Greens, Wild Rose, and many have not been involved in politics at all. Now, some people find this a little bit confusing. But I say we're the only party that truly re reflects the diversity of this great province. And we do that by rejecting the division and divisiveness of politics that insists that you either must be right or left. We are Albertans. That's what we are. We're also about more than just standing up to an overwhelming PC majority. Uh, we have broad appeal. We have strong connections to our communities. We have visionary policies. And looking around the room, I can tell you, we have great people. <laughs> we are on track to give Albertans not just a better opposition, but a better government, sooner <coughs> rather than later. And that is not something the NDP or the Liberals or Wild Rose or any other party can say. What Alberta needs is not just a better opposition, this province needs better government. So we are a group of people united by a common vision for Alberta based on a strong set of shared values and goals for our province. But to achieve that vision, we need each and every one of you. We need your friends, your families, your networks, your communities. We need you to continue to be the ambassadors of our party. We need you to volunteer and work on your local campaigns. We need you to step up and run for us as a candidate. We need you to help raise the money that we will need to fight the upcoming election. Our moment is here. Our time is now. In 2015, we will elect the first group of Alberta Party MLAs <laughs> to the legislature. Today, in this room, together, all of us, the Alberta Party, we choose to lead. Thank you very much.